Hello YouTube, this is Morgan, Airspeed Prime here with my next Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles episode review. This one's going to be for Season 4, Episode 21, Darkest Plight. So yeah, once again, not on camera this time. Um, lighting is really bad, it's night time here, uh, the only time I can record this, so hence audio only. But let's get into this episode. Uh, I've got a lot to say about this. This is probably going to be one of the most negative reviews I've ever had about this show. And I feel uh, there's not a ton of, like, positives to take away from this episode because it was just such a disappointment and a letdown after the setup from the previous episode. There was so much potential with the idea that, realistically, you set up killing off Splinter. And I think killing off Splinter, as, as, as much as I said last... Uh, Remember I said last uh, review that I'm not usually one to kind of ask for the death of a character to add stakes to something. This time they should have done that because this show is in desperate need of something big to happen. And I think killing off Splinter would have accomplished that. Because what you need is some focus on the turtles. The turtles in this episode are not important characters whatsoever. And that is a huge problem. And it's been a problem since the start of this show. The turtles are not important as characters. They've never attempted to really do any proper character development with like any of them. Um, and usually their fights end up being the side plots of episodes. Look at this episode. Who's the focus character? It's Splinter. There's Shredder. Uh, uh, there's the setup of, you know, the, I suppose, a side plot which will probably move into being a more main plot of what's going on with April, and then also the kind of background plot of Karai and what she's doing, how she feels about her you know, father, and, father, and then also uh, Shredder. The turtles are just like, oh, we have to go save Splinter because he's our master. That's fine, that's fine for this episode. But what about the rest of the season? What about everything else that's going on? Like, where's the arc? I think, my, my reasoning behind thinking that they should have killed off Splinter is basically that without Splinter around... You kind of force the turtles to have to act on their own. You force them to have to gain power to become more powerful and develop on their own without having him to always kind of have the answers to thing as, you know, the wise teacher, the father figure for them. And I think that's what this show needs. It needs something to add a little bit of seriousness to the turtles because too often than not, this show feels like it can just instantly dive back into fun time with the turtles um, when it really doesn't need to. Um, and I think the biggest criticism of this is just, I suppose, how they approached doing the reveal that, okay, Splinter and Shredder both fall down the chasm, which they established to be like a thousand foot, foot uh, deep, and basically none of them get injured. The only injury we see in this is basically Shredder's mutagen goes awry and does some crazy thing to his hand. But that's got nothing to do with like what Splinter did or the fall. And then Splinter's injury, the broken leg, was caused by Shredder in the fight before they fell. He didn't really take any injury apart from, I suppose, being knocked out in a thousand foot fall. Way to completely ruin the potential of danger for that thing establishing that it really hasn't done any damage to them whatsoever um as well as that just the the, the the fact that mikey and donnie could just like rappel down so easily it was it was a little bit just like really show really is this what what you're trying to do here like you, you set up something that could have been so big and then just brush it off in the first couple of seconds of the episode that, oh splinter's fine and then what on earth were they actually trying to do with Splinter in this episode in terms of, like, the fever vision he was having of the Rat King? Like, you basically just repeated the Rat King thing with Splinter for no apparent reason. Like, it didn't accomplish anything. There was no arc to this episode for Splinter. It was just, he fell down, he was injured, he kept going in and out of consciousness, imagined some crazy stuff happening, and then realized that none of that stuff actually happened and the Rat King actually was dead. I don't get what they were trying to go for with this. Like, is there any impact about the Rat King thing after this episode? Mikey and Donnie find him, and, you know, he obviously steals the broken leg, but 
is there any result of what just happened? This kind of crazy plot that just happened? I don't know. I think the only thing that the show has left open there to really heavily commit to with Splinter is that that broken leg should be the end of Splinter as a fighter within the series. I think you either have to just establish that 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 injury is so bad that he can only teach the turtles from here on out. He can't participate in the battles. And the ultimate goal that that basically leads to is that if we are going for a big final battle between uh, Shredder and the turtles, the turtles have to be the ones to fight Shredder this time and finally defeat him. That their sensei suffered an injury because of him that has caused that fight to not be able to happen anymore and that's ultimately what needs to happen because basically most of the important arc in relation to the turtles has been splinters issues with shredder shredders issues with splinter the turtles are just kind of there in the background so i think that's the real problem that the show is suffering from it's just that the turtles are just not important and yeah, I just I just hope they commit to doing something with the Splinter after this, and it doesn't just like if they establish like within a couple of episodes that he's healed, I'm gonna be so annoyed with this show. I think that injury has to stay with him for basically the rest of the show. That has to end his fighting in the show. I think overall, maybe he can take down some of the really weak enemies by doing some one-legged stuff, but you can't have him facing any of the notable villains within this show and working anymore um the only i think positive thing within this episode would be the this the gradual further setup for um april and her her soul crystal thing beginning to potentially take over her and how when she goes to use her powers at a really high level the crystal borders on taking over her and that we saw the her eyes begin to glow um, it kind of was beginning to change her personality with the kind of un-April-like grin that came up and the extra power when she hurled that thing back at Super Shredder. That was interesting. Really small aspect of the episode. They didn't really emphasize it all that much. Um, but it was, I think, an interesting setup. And I think the next episode is going to address what's going on with April more. So hopefully that's going to be interesting because, again, as I keep saying... Uh, April is one of the other interesting characters within this show. It's it's basically Karai, April, and Splinter are the interesting characters. Everyone else isn't that great. Um, with Karai, I I I I I'm growing really tired of the whole. Shredder just wants Karai to to now treat him as as uh, to wants Karai to th- treat him as call him father sorry how to word that um yeah she, she he wants her to call him father and i don't really get what they're going for here like i think we've gotten way past that and like karai just objectively doesn't want to call him that anymore and realizes who her true father is and the fact that she punched him and you know caused damage to him I suppose it highlights that, you know, he's not fully losing himself to the mutagen or whatever's going on with him. That there was this moment where he could gain control again and stop fighting and leave himself open. But I don't really get why they're emphasizing the whole Karai Splinter uh, Shredder thing anymore. Because I thought we've dealt with this already. She doesn't think of him in that way anymore. Why are we still on this thing? I get you're trying to kind of turn him into this kind of obsessed character now who's completely lost himself to kind of mutagen and madness, but it's just repeating the same stuff over and over again with these characters, and it's not exactly working. And you still have this whole thing of, like, will Karai go kind of rogue? Is she still not willing to fully team up with the Turtles again? And that if if Leo wasn't injured, she probably would have chased after um, Shredder. But because he was, uh, she stayed back and was like, next time. So she still wants to kind of go and take him out. Um, the other thing in this episode, I I really don't get what they're going for with uh, Super Shredder and the whole unstable mutagen plot and so on. It seems really forced that the amount of characters within the show that have been mutated, and he is the only character, the main villain in the show is the only character who's been mutated and suddenly requires more mutagen to keep himself from, like, exploding or whatever's happening to him. 
I'm I'm sure it's gonna build to something at some point, and it's gonna be some reveal about what the mutagen is, or like maybe his full mutation hasn't happened yet, or something like that. But as it is now, it's just this weird plot of just like, okay, he's the only character who needs to inject mutagen this way to function properly and not be destroyed. Uh, I don't really get what they're going for. Like your main villain, your main villain's big transformation, and this is what you do with it. Um, like how many episodes this season is it now that we've ended with um, the kind of plot point of Shredder is injecting mutagen? I think it's like three now. Um, it just doesn't have any impact anymore. The whole idea of characters being affected by mutagen, because once again, this show repeating plot points again. Rat King comes back again to no effect. Mutagen, no real effect. Karai and her father, no real effect. The only interesting thing is the new plot point of, like, how is the crystal affecting April and where are they going to go with that? Is she going to become the villain? Is she going to do something? Is there going to be some further reveal about the crystal? That's interesting because it's new and different and April is a character who they've done some stuff with and there's interesting stuff around her. Unfortunately, not the case for the main characters. The turtles are just, in this episode, were just there to fight. And not even fight that well. So, I think that's that's part of the problem as well. Too often than not, it's like, new villain comes in, destroys the turtles. The turtles sort of get the advantage and escape. They they don't really, I think, at this stage in the series, come across as overly like strong in fights. And things need to change going forward in this show. I, I'm hoping because we're obviously like four episodes from the end of the season that we build to something good and big and it makes season five worth going into. But as I said before, I'm like this close to kind of dropping this series uh, in terms of continuing to review it and stuff like that. Uh, it's really just for me failing on all fronts when it comes to its direction with its plot and stuff like that. It's really not working that well anymore and from what I've seen online from other people I think a lot of people are feeling the same way with this show it's really lost its way a bit and it can't it's struggling to kind of have the big moments hit home as much as it perhaps should be so I don't know in the comments let me know what your thoughts were on the episode but uh, other than that I'm going to end the review there so uh, thanks for watching and bye